All right, first and foremost, give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Basham, Yahushua, Basham, Kakudash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and who was worthy to be counted for double honors. And peace and salutations to you brothers out there pushing this truth wholeheartedly and sincerely and for love of the gospel. It's a brother from, uh, it's, it's a brother Gabari from the Indiana camp. Come back at you again with another sit down. So basically, I talk about uh, how the Lord is going to protect uh, the men of the Lord in that day. And it's been shown uh, through time and time again. All right. Now, of course, I'm not going to make that the I'm not going to make that the um, the title. It was way too long. But anyways, um, that's basically what I'm going to be talking about in this sit down. How the Lord showed um, how the Lord showed that he had uh, certain men protected um, in the ancient world that uh, there were in no uh, that were in uh, uh, certain situations where common knowledge would show you that um, that, you know, the certain situations they were in were deadly. All right. Or was in a real bad situation. All right. You know, um, for example, you know, if you get in a car wreck and the car blows up, you know, and, 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 and both cars go into a river, it's like 100 percent likely chance you're not going to survive something like that. But just imagine you seeing all that and then probably, you know, uh, a couple minutes later, you see a person walking out of the river completely unscathed and completely unharmed. All right. That is complete. That 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 would be an astonishment, you know. You see in two cars a, a, a head collision. Both cars blow up, you know, and then from the explosion they both uh, fall off the bridge into a river, and you see one person walking out the river completely unharmed and completely unscathed, with not a scratch on them. All right, what we're talking about that's the type of power that the Lord uh, can give a person. All right, it was uh, proved countless time time again. All right, throughout all the scriptures. And through the spirit, I'm going to give you a couple examples. All right. And the reason why I was uh, I'm doing this video is because I was thinking about how the Lord protected the men of 20 in 2020. You know, now I can't speak about every uh, uh, I can't speak about every brother. But I know for a fact that uh, the year 2020, I barely I didn't even do that much work. All right. Um, when I was um, when I was filing my taxes, I had a. Uh, I had noticed that I didn't barely, I bar I had barely did work, you know, that year, you know, because a whole bunch of stuff was shut down. I was, you know, laid off for a few months. So, you know, cer certain things happened, you know, but I, it, it was, it was, um, I was looking at it. I was like, wow, was the Lord still protecting me? Matter of fact, I was, um, I was even more protected. All right. I was even more taken care of, of, of that whole entire year. All right. So I just was, was reminiscing back then. I was like, man, you know, just how much more in the time of trouble, all right? When the Lord is, when I'm, when I'm going to really need the Lord, all right? You know, Jacob's trouble, if you will. So um, without further ado, I'm going to just hop straight into the scriptures. <clears throat> this is Acts chapter 12, verse 6. It says, um, and when, it says, and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two, with, with two chains and keep, it says, and the keepers before the door before before the door kept the prison all right so in this in this situation peter was uh basically caught by uh king herat you know uh and he was put in jail all right and, he, and basically peter's finna d peter's finna do a, a houdini act <laughs> you know he's finna you know he's finna disappear or right, on him all right because when they wake up they're, they're not gonna you know peter's not gonna be there all right so not only was Peter uh, 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 in between two guards that was in, in the cell with him, shackled up, chained. He also had uh, two guards standing on the outside, on the outside, posted up, you know? Um, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, they were on the outside of the door, posted up uh, outside, the, outside the door, you know? And somehow in this, in, in this impossible situation, Peter uh, somehow got away, you know? And it's not by a coincidence or by happy chance that either, man. It's because what the Lord sent an angel to go rescue Peter. All right. So um, verse seven, it says, and behold, the angel of the Lord came unto him. It says, and a light shined in the, in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and riz him up, saying, arise up quickly. It says, and his chains fell off of his hand. It says, and the angel said unto him, gird thyself and bind and bind on thy sandals. It says, and he said, and he, and he so did. And he said unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. 
It says, and he went out and followed him. And was not that it was true, which was done by the by the angel. So Peter thought he was dreaming. You know, he didn't think this was true. He thought he was, you know, seeing a vision. You know, yeah, yeah, right here. So I should have read this. It says, but thought he saw he saw a vision. You know, so he's thinking, you know, he was dreaming. He saw a vision. You know, just imagine the angel of the Lord came, you know, with a shine, you know, tapped you on the side. Like, hey, yo, Peter, get up. Come on. You know, and you like. Oh shit! You know, like what's going on? You know, you, you know, and then he just tell you know your shackles just fell off your hand. He's telling you to put on your clothes and let's go. You know, you throwing on your clothes, throwing on your shoes, and you know you walking past you know the, the guards or whatnot. You know, you just got up. You know, you just got uh, got up from the guards and uh, most likely they probably was sleep. You know, you just got up from the guards and and and, and left. You know, so it's it, it was almost like too good to be true type of you know thing. You know, but um, it says uh. Verse 10, it says, it says, and when they and they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that led it unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. So it basically it, 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 um, it had a uh, what's that? Uh, the, you know, grocery stores have them where the doors opened up by themselves. I forgot. I forgot what's it called. But uh, yeah, basically that that's what happened. You know, now I'm not 100 percent sure if the if the guards were, were awake or sleep at the time, I'm. You know, I'm pretty sure this is at, at at nighttime. You know, um, but uh, uh, I'm not because the scriptures doesn't say if they were if they were awake or asleep. Um, no, no, no. I know uh, later on down in the, in this, in in, uh, in this chapter, it talks about when the um, hold on, let me just get because it, it talks about when they awoken. Uh, let me finish this verse out right quick. It says, Iron gates led into the city, which opened unto them of its own accord. And they went out and passed through one of the streets and went forth. The angel departed from him. So basically, the angel's whole job was to rescue Peter from that jail cell. All right. You know, so just imagine you just got cast into jail. You got you got uh, two prisons. You know, you got two prisons wards inside the jail cell, which and you got two prisons wards outside the jail. You know, so if you if so, if some happen, so if some happen chance, you get past both of those prisons. You still got two more to deal with when you get outside, you know. But here it's go. You got Peter that just walked boat by, by all four of those men out onto the streets, you know. And then the angel completely disappeared. It did his job and left, you know. And the scripture says what the Lord shall give his angels charge over thee, man, what to protect us, to watch us in our time of need. Um, but hold on, to answer that, uh, I want to see something, Peter Knock. This is, you know. Okay, here we go, right here. Um, verse 18, it says, now, now as soon as it were day, they were, it says, there was no small stir among the soldiers. It says, what was... It says, what was become of Peter? And he answered, and it says, and when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded them that they should be put to death. So, yeah, so basically it was most likely they were asleep, you know, because um, uh, it, it was talking about the day. Because this is this how, you know, it was at nighttime because it was, you know, because when the day arose, you know, probably the day after the, the, the next day arose, the sun come up, the soldiers was looking for Peter and it was like, where did he go? You know, we, we had him shackled, you know, the gates were locked. You know, we had two men on the outside. We had two men on the inside. Where could he possibly have went to? You know, so most likely, the, the you know, the, the, the wards and everything was sleep, you know. So that's when Peter made his escape with the angel, man, you know. But basically, I brought this out to show you that what? Um, that in, in, in that impossible situation, you know, that hopeless situation where you think all all in all. Basically, all things said and done, you know, you had the Lord give you a way of escape. All right. The Lord still delivered you. OK. I'm going to get to the next one. This is Daniel chapter three and verse 12. It says there it says this is there a certain there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over their affairs of the pro, of the province of Babylon. Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regard thee. They serve not thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. 
It says then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to be to be to bring Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake saying to thee, Is it true, O Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not you serve my God, nor worship the, the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready that at that time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbun, a uh, palso, and uh, and doll seamer, and all kinds of music, ye shall fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast unto the same hour into the midst of a burning fir fiery furnace, fiery furnace, and. And who is the and who is the God that shall serve you? Shout socket. Like and who is the God that shall deliver you out of the of my hand? It says, And Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in thy matter in this matter. It says, If if it be so, our God who we serve and is able to deliver us from the furnace from the from the from the burning furious furnace and he shall deliver us out of thine hand o, o king it says but if but if not be it known unto thee o king that we will not serve thy god nor worship thee oh, it's like i lost my place uh be known unto thee okay uh Socket, I lost my damn, I lost my place. Out of the hands, answer the. This matter, okay. Uh, I'm gonna just start from seventeen again. It says, and if it be so, our guy who we serve is able to deliver us from this fire, burning, fiery furnace, fierce furnace. He and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God. Nor worship the the golden image which which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his vat of his vase, of his vase, basically his face, was changed was changed against Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanding they should heat the furnace one seventh one seven times more than it what to be heated, you know. So basically, what uh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar turned it for a blast, for a force, you know. He didn't just cut it on. He, 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 he fucking overheated it. All right. It says, it says he commanded the he commanded the most high, the most mightiest men that were in the army to bind uh, uh to bind um. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, kind. It says and he commanded and he commanded the mightiest men that were in his army to bind Sh uh, uh, Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego, to cast them unto the burner to the burning, fiery furnace. It says then these men were bound in their coats and their horse in their horse horses and their hats and in and in. And, and other garments, basically that's what horses means, garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, therefore, because the king commanded was, it's like it, because, it's like it, therefore, because the king's command commandment was urgent, and the and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flames of the fire, if the flames of the fire slew. Those men that took up uh, Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego. So in this, in this um saying, basically the the, the mighty and, the, and and it's beautiful because when I was reading this, I was thinking like, man, uh 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 uh, uh King Nebuchadnezzar commanded his mightiest men. So just imagine your mightiest men, big in stature, probably a decent size on you, you know, uh 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 uh, so. Someone who will look intimidating. Someone just imagine a uh, Shaq, you know, or uh, uh, or 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 Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, or Andre the Giant. Some might some 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 mighty graded men, you know, coming to bound you up and throw you into the fire, you know. 
I'm not calling uh, Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego uh, uh, feeble and weak, but they were probably regular men, you know? They probably wasn't, you know, uh, 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 too mighty, you know? Well, in this in, well, in this instance, they were mighty, but, you know, I'm talk basically I'm talking about their, uh, um, their, uh, their development. You know, they probably were just regular men, you know? And basically in this, you know, uh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar had his mightiest men cast him into that, uh, that fire. But it's, 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 it's crazy because... Once the Lord had them do that, the Lord slew the men, the might, them so-called mighty men that did it, you know. So to show you how weak and feeble, uh, 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 how can I say, uh, it's like it's like I'm, it's like I'm trying to, it's like I'm trying to explain something, but I don't have the quite words for it, you know. Um, uh, 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 it's like the Lord slew. The so-called mighty men of a uh, 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 of King Nebuchadnezzar's army, but saved uh, uh, Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, which would probably, com in, in comparison, wasn't as mighty. You know, or wasn't as a uh, 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 tall in stature. You know, so this is a prime example of the Lord showing you. Listen, I can I can save the I can save the weak, feeble, and the needy, and get rid of the uh, the, the proud, the mighty, and the and the rich. You know, just like Esau, man. Esau is at his highest, but guess what? Who who's who's the Lord coming to save when he uh, when he comes back, man? The poor, the the the, the, the Israelites, man. Uh, starting with the elect, you know, which we're the lowest of the low. You know, we have what? First of all, you have the whole entire world, all nations, against the Israelites, and then with even in Israel, you have the Israelites against the elect. You know, so we get a double portion uh, of uh, of losing. You know. So just imagine you go to school with your whole entire family. You know, let's say you go to school with three of your cousins. Well, let's say five of your cousins, you know, a brother and sister, five of your cousins. And then you're the only one that uh, uh, that's basically, you know, that's kind of the loser out of the group. So not only do you get it, you know, not only do you get picked on by the other kids and everything, but you also get picked on by your own family, you know? That's how the elect is looked at. And that's why the Lord is coming back to save the elect. All right. And, and what? Doing away with the so-called mighty, with the so-called rich, with the so-called successful, you know. Which which always says what? I just want to thank God for my blessings and everything. Because if you if you was in the world, you actually think the, the Lord, you know, bless these people, you know. You actually would think, you know, but really all them riches and all that power and all that uh, pride is actually a curse because ultimately be what? It's going to it's going to lead to your destruction. You know, where if you were more humble, more lowly, you would have accepted how about Shem Yashah. But what them, 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 them rich elites. And I'm, I'm talking about the so-called famous people that's in America. They got a couple hundred thousand. They got a couple hundred million. You know, these them, them so-called men, they, they don't they don't regard what the Lord thinks or what the Lord says. They're too busy about doing what they uh, about doing their own, um, doing their own thing, man. All right. But back to the uh, scripture, it's just I, I have found that uh, interesting how the, the, the mighty men, the so-called, you know, big uppity men cast these other men into the fire that didn't even do no harm to them, but yet uh, uh, consumed them. And they didn't even get they didn't even get put in the fire. They got consumed by the flames outside, you know, that was outside the fire, you know, so you didn't even get you didn't even last inside the fire. You last seconds on the outside, you know? So that just shows you no matter, you know, no matter if we were, you know, uh, 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 how can I say, um, uh, small, small, short, tall, great, muscular, skinny, you know, if the Lord is with you, the Lord is with you, man. Hey, I, the brother from uh, Chicago, Jeremiah, he always say, um, uh, uh, well, he doesn't always say, I mean, he was just basically always tell me if he ever gets into it with somebody, he's, you know, it was a little saying, he said, uh, he, it was, a, it was a little saying he would say, he said, man, you better pray the Lord is, is with you, you know, and not, and not, and not with me, you know? So basically he's saying, you know, if the Lord is with you, then you will prevail. But if the Lord is with me, I will prevail, you know? So it's basically saying, you know, uh, 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 uh and, and, and the thing about the Lord is the Lord is always with the one that is not likely to win, all right? The one is always, it's not likely to win. Because that's why Israel 
always did uh, the, the, the great and marvelous works. What it says, one man, one man shall chase away a thousand and ten men, ten and a hundred men, ten thousands. You know, it, it, it even said, uh, what Saul, uh, Saul slew his thousands and David his ten thousands. Thinking of one man uh, slaying ten thousand men, other men, you know. That was all by the grace of Yahweh Bashim Yahshua, who gave him the strength to do that. You know? So that's just how much more uh, uh, the weak and feeble. All right? Um, yeah, the Sludis men, verse 23, it says, and, and, and these three men, Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego, fled, it says, fell down, bound, fell down, bound into the midst of the fiery, of the burning fiery furnace. Says then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did did not we cast three men bound into the midst of fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O, o king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. So not only were they did the Lord uh, 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 unbound their you know their restraints, but they're also just walking around you know with Yahweh Shah himself. You know, just walking around the fire like it's not even affecting them. This is fire. This is not just fire. This is fire times a 10. You know, Nebuchadnezzar cranked the heat up. You know, it probably went to 130 degrees to over a thousand degrees in there. Who knows how hot it was in there? You know, but it was hot. Just know it was hot. All right. Um, uh, Saki, uh, then Nebuchadnezzar like it, says, he answered and said, lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and and they have no hurt. And the fourth and the form of the fourth is like the son of, of God. All right. Says then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the to the mouth of the fiery burning furnace. So he didn't even get close. He just came to it and was like, hey, you know, you screamed out. It says and spake and said. Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego, you, it says, ye serve the most high, ye serve the most high, come forth out hither. It says, then Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of fire. All right. So basically what? King Nebuchadnezzar threw some men into some fire. And, and King Nebuchadnezzar's mightiest men, you know, and, 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 and it's, and that's why when I read the scriptures, I'd be like, man, I was like, you know, the Lord probably was giving, the Lord probably was um, showing an example to King, Neb to, to King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, showing like, look, look, look you're going to get your mighty men and your mightiest men is not going to be able to withstand this fire. Didn't, they, didn't even get, they didn't even get in the fire. They got close to the fire and died from it. But yet, watch my men, you throw in the fire, survive it, you know? Just to show you how how what type of level the Lord is on, what type of level uh, you are uh, that you are on, you know, um, you know, and, 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 you know, as you see, they survived that. You they survived that tribulation, man. Another impossible, hopeless situation, but through the Lord, what them men survived. All right, how much more us? All right, this is the book of Acts, chapter twenty-eight, verse one. It says. Uh, and when they were escaped, they, it says, when they were said, then they knew that the island was called Melta, Melta. It says, and the, and the, and the barbarous people, basically native people, people of that land showed us no little, no little kindness for they kindled a fire and received uh, us every one. It says, because of, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a, 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 a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came out a, a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when and when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hanging on his hand, they they said among them, no doubt this man is a murderer whom thought he had escaped the sea. Yet vengeance suffereth, suffereth not to live. See, so basically what happened is what Paul and, and uh, some certain, certain other men had just got off of a boat and got came to an island. Or, well, I didn't say an island, but came to a, a plot of land and, and they were making uh, campfires. All right. So Paul, at a point, gathered up some sticks, threw it in a fire. And it was a viper, which if you don't know a viper, a viper is a very, very venomous snake. All right. If not the most venomous, you know, came and bit 
Paul's hand. You know, and, and you know, and when the bit, it, it, it was hanging. You know, you know, if you ever see a, a snake bite, the 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 vi- the, 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 um, the viper hangs a little bit. You know, he hangs a little bit, and uh, you know, people saw it was all them. This 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 man must be a murderer. You know, um, it says, and he shook off the beast unto the fire and and felt no harm. So not only did he he didn't even feel the harm, uh 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 uh, uh of the beast. You know. He didn't even feel. He didn't even feel. Uh, uh the, the, you know, the bite mark probably went away as soon as he. Uh, uh, well, I ain't gonna say that. Scripture doesn't say that. Scripture just say he didn't feel no harm. All right, he probably was bleeding or whatever. But you know, scripture says he didn't feel no harm. So, hey, you know, Paul just shrugged it off like it was something, like it wasn't nothing. You know, it says how be it they looked, and when he should have swollen or fell down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. So not only did his hand not swell up, you know, or did he he not just vi- he just not just fall down and die from the venomous bite. They looked at him and they looked for a while, you know, because it, t- it doesn't take a uh, long for venom to get around the bloodstream. All right. Um, matter of fact, I think they said from a, a viper bite is maybe 12 to 30 minutes. Maybe, you know, who, who's, to, who's to say, you know, but anyways, you know, um, but they was looking at him. That's not the point I'm trying to get. The point I'm trying to get at is here you go. Another uh, impossible situation that happened that that, you know, you would see you would look, you know, oh, yeah, that guy's dead. He's through. He's done for, you know, but yet he alive. He, he stayed alive. Why? Through the grace and mercy of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh you know. They just thought he was a god, but really, to be honest, the glory goes to Yahweh Bashem Yahusha, man. All right, because guess what? It, it wasn't sanctioned. It wasn't sanctioned for Paul to die that way. All right, just like Yahweh Shah saying, "Oh, I'm they 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 they, uh, they have not taken me up because it's yet not my time." Same reason for us, man. Esau has not rolled down on us because it's not it's not the time yet. You know, it's not sanctioned yet. All right. Scripture says what? For every purpose, there is a judgment in time. All right. For everything that's supposed to happen, it's a reason why it's happening. And there's a time it's supposed to happen. OK. Um, this is uh, let's go to King first. First King, chapter 17, verse two. It says, and the word of the it says in the word of the Lord came to him. This is a uh, uh, this is a Elijah. Uh, uh, this is Elijah, uh, basically. This is Yahweh talking to Elijah. S- said, came unto him, saying, uh, it says, uh, uh, get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook of she- she- uh, 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 Sheriff. It says that it bef- is, is before Jordan. It says, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee. So uh, basically what the Lord had told uh, Elijah to go to a river, that's where you're going to get your drink from. And I'm going to send and I'm going to send ravens to bring you your meat and your food. All right. You know, how, you know how much faith that takes and how much belief that's going to take for, you know, uh, for you just to like just to go somewhere without no food, without no water and just in the hopes of what the Lord said was true. You know, now did not the Lord deliver on his uh, promise. Did not the Lord take care of Elijah while he was at is out there and not the Lord set up other things for him, you know, after he departed from there? The answer is yes, man. All right. This is why the scripture says, look at the generations of old. Have any ever trust in the Lord and was confounded or have any ever abided in the Lord's uh, uh, um, uh, mercy and was forsaken? All right. Roughly paraphrasing. I, I, I butchered it. But, you know, if you ever want to read, I think it's in the book of uh, Sirach, the second chapter, you know, um, uh, 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 but yeah, man, you know, has the Lord ever forsaken any of these men? No, no, they have not. We just read about what? A Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego. We just read about a uh, Paul. We just read about a uh, Peter. Now we're reading about Elijah, you know, and so forth and so forth, man. The book of Hebrews talks about how faith is a thing. Uh, it, it, it's, it's impossible to please the Lord without faith. And all, uh, all of these men I've named had faith. All right. It says, so he went and did according to the word of the Lord. It says, he, it says, for he went and dwelled by the brook Sherith. Then it says, that is before Jordan. And the raves and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the, in the evening. And he drank 
of the brook. And it came to pass after a, after a while that the brook dried up because there had no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarif, Zarif, Zarephath, which, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So basically, not only did the Lord, you know, provide him food and drink where he was at, he, the Lord was also setting up something else for him for when he depart, you know. So the Lord setting you, hey, I want you to go here. You're going to dwell in it. You know, you're going to dwell here for a certain amount of time. And then next, I want you to go here. And the Lord's going to prepare it all for you. All right. And it's just your job to what? To 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 uh, to uh, to abide by there, you know, abide by the rules, abide by the guidelines. You know, the Lord's got you. The Lord take care of you, you know. Hey, look at your look at your children, man. Your children doesn't know when. The, uh, well, I ain't gonna say your children don't know when the next time they gonna eat. But your children doesn't uh, 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 get up and make their own food. They they completely they completely rely on you to feed them. All right, and it is your job to do that. You know. Now I'm not saying it's the Lord's job to to, to take care of us and everything, but He will. Uh, the Scripture says what? Um. Uh, the Lord is not one to forget your uh, faithful deeds, roughly paraphrasing, you know. So as long as we stay faithful, as long as we stay sincere, as long as we stay true to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, you know, the Lord will take care of us, man. Hey, the script, hey, it was at one point where the Lord was asking Jeremiah, uh, 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 the Lord was asking Jeremiah, um, uh, 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 what unfaithfulness did your fathers find in me for you not to obey me? So basically, the Lord was saying, what fought? What did I do for you to disobey me? Or what did I do for you not to believe the words I said? Then I say I was going to do everything I said I was going to do. If as long as y'all did this, I said I was going to do this. As long as y'all did that, I said I was going to do this. I delivered on everything I said I was going to do. But yet here you are, y'all still disobeying me. You know? It will be more beneficial to obey the Lord than to, di than to disobey. All right? I'm going to go ahead and keep going because this video kind of getting a little longer than I expected. Um, this is uh, Nahum chapter 9 and verse 21 It says yea 40 years Did thou sustain thee In the wilderness All right, now, now, now mind you The wilderness that we walked around for 40 years When we was leaving Egypt That, that, was, that was known as no man's no, That no man's passes through No man went into that wilderness uh, willingly or That wasn't a, a frequent um, A traveling point You know That was a, a treacherous hard time you know but the lord had what sustained us man that what it says so that thy so that nothing so that so that they lack nothing we, we, we didn't even lack there's not nothing where we wanted when we wanted food we had food when we wanted to drink we had drink we want to have a, 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 a substance we had substance all right it says their clothes wax not old see our clothes didn't even get old on us which it, you'll be lucky if you keep a pair of pants or, or a shirt for a year without something happening to it. It fading. It getting a, a rip or a hole in it. You know, I would be it would be lucky if you can have clothes to last that long. All right. I have shirts that, that when I bought was a certain size and now it's three or four times uh, 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 bigger than what I bought it, you know, or three or four times smaller than what I bought it. And I'll be like, damn, I, I just. I just bought the shirt like last year. But now it's all stretched out, worn, torn up, you know, look ragged, taggered and raggedy, you know. Just imagine the Lord sustaining your clothes for 40 years. That's the real Gucci. That's the real Louis Vuitton, <laughs> you know. Not this bullshit clothes and belts that we got that last for maybe a couple years and then that's it. It says what? And their feet swelled not, you know. Your feet didn't even hurt, man. All right. And that angel and, and that angel's bread, I, uh, it uh, 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 that angel's bread was a uh, 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 was was given unto us, man. All right, was given unto us in our time of need, you know. And then what we had a um, quail to eat too, you know. Hey, Moses did what, man? It was a tree. Moses took leaves from 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 from, from a tree and dipped them in the water to make the water sweet, you know. So the Lord took care of us, man. All right. The Lord had took care of us. This last one I'm going to get right here. This is a uh, Psalm chapter 91 and verse 11. It says, for 
for which I can really start from the top from this, but I'm gonna just get straight to the point. It says, "For he shall give." Um, I gotta start from ten. I'm gonna start from ten. It says, "There shall no evil befall thee; neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in thy ways." All right. So, so the Lord's gonna give what his angels charge over thee, just like he did Peter. All right. And just like how Shai did what? A Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego, man. Had charge over us to what? To protect us. Matter of fact, the scripture says in uh, Re Revelations what? It says, Hurt not the sea, nor the land, until what? The Lord's elect be fulfilled and sealed. All right? Until the Lord's elect be sealed, no harm is going to come to this place, man. All right? So how much, you know, because what? The Lord wants to make sure his men are safe. His men are, are, are secured. Okay? Then everything is going to be a uh, take. Then everything is going to get a uh, 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 10 times, 100 times worse, man. But guess what? Guess who's going to uh, be uh, 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 be saved out of all that, man? Is the elect. All right. That's who's going to be sustained, man. You know, and the Lord has 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 multiple. And I, I just graved the surface. I've just I've just I just basically I just brought up the ones that, that, I, that I can think of off the top of my head. You know, Peter, Peter with the viper. Uh, I'm sorry. Peter uh, that was in jail. Paul with the viper. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, 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 I can I can even brought out Dan, uh, uh, Daniel and the lions. Then you know there was multiple other ones I could have brought out. But you know I was just basically just trying to hit points to show you. Listen, the Lord protects those who serve Him. All right. So as long as we abide in this truth sincerely, faithfully, and true, the Lord is going to have our back, man. All right. And the Lord and, and, and a reason, like like I said, the reason that I made I'm making this video is because the Lord showed me an inkling of that last year, you know. Lord willing, He had Lord willing. Uh, 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 um, I get shown I get shown more mercy when Jacob trouble get hits, you know. With that, what without that, you know. Uh, with that, I want to give all praise on the Lord to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahshua, Bashem, Kadash. I don't want to make this video too long. Salakia is just, you know, I had a couple, you know, reading all these. You know, the scriptures I had just, you know, took a little minute. But, you know, Lord willing, I hope, I, I very hope this video was edifying for you brothers out there. Uh, 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 also hope it was exhort, uh, uh, exhortated a few brothers, you know, exhorted a few brothers, you know, to um, to basically have faith, to stay true, to Yahweh Shah, And, um, yeah, with that, Shalom.